prodigal son. There is no returning for you, Raziel. Zephon, your visage becomes you. It's an appropriate reflection of your soul. And you are not his handsome Raziel anymore. His precious firstborn son turned betrayer. You have missed so many changes, little Raziel. Look around you. See how the human's weapon of destruction has become my home. Indeed, my body. A cocoon of brick and granite from which to watch a pupating world. A crevice in which to cower, only scuttling from the shadows to devour a victim already ensnared in your cowardly trap. But you've made the mistake of leaving me unbound, and it is you who must succumb to my will. Will! Instinct! Reflex action! The insect mind finds little difference. I warn you, brother. As my stature has grown, so it is matched by my appetite. Step forward, morsel. And we have our next boss, Zephon. He actually only has three things he can do. He can bite at you, and he does this swipe attack with his little arms on his actual body, and then he stabs at the ground with those arms that he has on the ceiling. And that's pretty much it for Zephon. Uh, he's actually more of a gimmick fight than anything else. You'll see in a few seconds. It's really kind of like all the bo really like all the bosses in Soul Reaver. It's more of a puzzle than anything else. By the way, here's a neat effect. If you hit the uh, the tentacle arms on the ceiling with the Soul Reaver, it does break them. Oh, it, it oh, is all bastard. Uh, on the upside, at least. At least, uh, while all, every boss fight is a puzzle, at least blocks aren't involved. Yes, that's true. However, there is picking things up and throwing, which is... sort of similar. Meh. Anywho. I love how you can see that the, uh, that the flamethrower guy back there, he must have gotten hit by that giant door anus thing that closed up there. Which is pretty funny because he's right in the right spot to get chopped in half. I really like that touch. Oh, and uh, one other thing. If you're playing this game, don't be an idiot like me. See what I did here? I killed the closest tentacle. If you kill any of the tentacles, kill the far ones. Because otherwise you have to dodge like this all the time and you almost die because you're an idiot like me. Or you are me. Sorry, nobody's perfect. Yeah, I lived through it, so, you know, good enough. I love that sound, by the way. Like something's gonna pop out of it. Something of a disappointing boss fight, though. Yeah, it's really gimmicky. Consuming Zephon's apostate soul has bestowed on you a new gift. Like his vampire spawn, you are able to scale certain walls which are otherwise impassable, but only in the physical realm. In the spirit world, these insubstantial edifices will not support you. The irony here is that when you're in the spectral realm, you don't have any sort of man. Well, the ridiculous thing is that eventually, that doesn't even matter. In the mountains beyond the pillars, Nosgoth's cataclysms have exposed an ancient crime. Endowed with Zephon's soul, you may now progress where your path was hitherto impeded. <laughs> hitherto. <laughs> but yeah, in Defiance, you actually can climb walls in the Spectral Realm. So, you know, eat that shit. Well, you know, I mean, this was, it was the Elder God telling us this in this game. and Hey, uh, hey, no spoilers. Yeah. Oh, no spoilers, I'm just saying. The Elder God. But yeah, like, also, considering the fact that he has still has quite a few power-ups to gain, I guess it makes sense. Anyway, we're pretty much done here. Thankfully, the Silent Cathedral is effing over. 
Thank God. To make it not so silent. <laughs> then next time we're going to be heading off and investigating what has come from the cataclysms. I really can't say more than that because it's a giant spoiler and one of the most interesting things in the game. So I'm just going to shut up. I'll catch you guys next time. And hopefully me too. Maybe.